Hello, my name is Tadas Molinauskas and I am from Konus University of Technology, Lithuania. And today I would like to share with you our research on whole transporting self-assembling monolayers as an effective approach for perovskite solar cells. So this journey has started more than 140 years ago when Alexander Stoletov constructed first photovoltaic device. And for some time, this technology was more of a curiosity without any practical application. And the earliest practical application was in space, space technology, when uh, Vanguard 1 was the first satellite to have solar electric power. As you can see from this chart, so over the years, uh, photo photovoltaic technology has developed quite nicely and uh, all sorts of different uh, approaches and technologies and uh, ideas were developed uh, and perfected and uh, efficiency of the devices was climbing steadily all the time and nowadays the market is, is dominated by silicon solar cell technology but I would like to speak to you about some other emerging PVs, in this case in particular, uh, perovskite solar cells. And over the last 10 or so years, efficiency of these perovskite solar cell devices has increased quite noticeably, up to 25, more than 25%. And the tandems, uh, silicon perovskite tandems, have reached almost 30% efficiency. Overall, the structure of a perovskite solar cell, uh, general structure of a perovskite solar cell, is depicted in, in, in this slide. So you have two electrodes, you have elect, uh, charge, uh, charge transporting materials, and light absorbing perovskite in the middle. And you, have, you can have either regular structure, like here, where electron transporting material is at the, at the bottom and whole transporting at the top, or inverted where whole transporting material is at the bottom and electron transporting material is at the top. We as a research group focus our attention mostly on whole transporting materials and we have a whole, num whole, whole list of requirements, uh, among them suitable energy levels, sufficient uh, mobility, whole mobility and conductivity, also thermal photochemical, photochemical stability, and of course, another thing is reasonable cost, as if these materials would be extremely expensive, they would make little sense in application in practical applications. And in some cases, depending on the structure of your devices, good solubility is also required. So currently, most popular whole transporting materials, such as let's say golden standard, is spiromyotide and depending on the type of a device and person who makes it efficiency ranges from 15 to 25 percent uh, here in this slide I have I have highlighted uh, the most commonly used whole transporting materials and as you can see all of them are quite expensive ranging from 250 euros per gram all the way up to 2000 euros per gram and just to compare them uh, to gold, so gold costs around 35, 40 euros per gram each. So why they are so expensive? So one of the reasons why is really complicated and uh, multi-step synthesis. For example, spiromyotide, you need five steps to make this molecule, and also you need to use quite expensive purification procedures for the intermediate materials and for the final one. The other issue with a lot of whole transporting materials is that they have low conductivity, uh, which is not sufficient for good performance in perovskite solar cells. So you need to add additives, all sorts of dopants, which partially oxidize uh, our HTM, and you have two orders of magnitude increased uh, increase in conductivity. But this, this approach has its own drawbacks, and they are mostly reflected in uh, reduced stability of uh, overall devices. So what can be done about it? So we propose a self-assembly monolayer approach, 
uh, for the whole transporting materials where you have your molecule cons constructed out of three parts so anchoring group then uh, aliphatic spacer and finally a functional group that is actually performing the function so we took a molecule that was already performing quite well in perovskite solar cells and uh, modified it so we took uh, half of it, added uh, anchoring phosphonic acid anchoring phosphonic acid anchoring group, which is among the most universal and uh, strongest binding anchoring groups out there. And we ended up with first generation self-assembling whole transporting materials capable of forming self-assembling monolayers, which which have anchoring fragment and also functional fragment. Uh, the application of these materials on top of uh, metal oxides, is, uh, conductive metal oxides, is really straightforward. You, you take your substrate and you dip it into this uh, diluted solution of our HTM. And then you take it out, anneal it for one hour, and finally you... Uh, rinse it and you wash away excess of, uh, of the material leaving just a thin monolayer on top of a substrate alternatively you can use uh, spin coating or spray to 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 make this to have the same result again you use quite a uh, quite a dilute solution of uh, sand material and afterwards, after you spray it or spin coat it, you anneal it. And again, as before, so you rinse to wash away excess of the material. So we have tested with first generation SAM molecules in perovskite solar cells in cooperation with Helmholtz Center from Berlin researchers. And the devices show the efficiencies of around uh, roughly 18%. Uh, com uh, it was a good result, but we thought that perhaps we can make it even better. And we thought, what, what can we do about it? And we chose approach, less is more. And in this case, so we got rid of these diphenylamine groups. And we ended up with second generation SAM molecules. So if you compare devices constructed uh, using standard reference material PTAA with a first generation SAMS. So you see that first generation SAM molecule showed worse performance. It was uh, comparable, but still worse than the reference material. However, second generation SAMS already showed noticeable improvement in device efficiency compared to the reference material PTAA. We were also curious to find out uh, does this approach, this SAM approach, work just with this particular uh, perovskite composition, or is it is more universal? So we also uh, tested the SAMs in uh, different with different compositions of the perovskites, also with vacuum deposited perovskites, and I'm happy to say that in both of these cases we have. Really good. We have observed really good results, and so this is not just one trick pony. This approach. We also looked at the effects of the spacer length. So, does different lengths of a spacer influence the performance of the devices? And here you can see that uh, as we increase the length of a spacer from two to four to eight carbons. So initially, there is very little difference in performance or fill factor, but as the chains get longer, so yes, uh, performance, uh, fill factor and performance drops quite significantly. Uh, looking at this, due to the nature of this technology, it sh we figured out that it should work uh, quite well with in tandem approach, especially when you have textured or, or rough surfaces. So for for, for Test this approach uh, in tandems. We have chosen CI CIGS solar cells, which are known for quite a rough, quite a rough surface. And we and the perovskite solar cells were constructed on top of them. And so these tandems demonstrated efficiency of around 24%. 
The next logical step was, of course, to move uh, to silicon uh, perovskite tandems. And uh, again, in this, in this sort of setup, perovskite uh, self-assembly monolayers demonstrated really good uh, performance. And the overall, the overall devices showed more than 29% efficiency. We also done initial testing of stability, initial stability testing. And if you look at the long-term uh, maximum power point track, so the red line, uh, so over through more than 300 hours, the, the performance loss was uh, less than 5%. And we also did a little bit of uh, thermal testing as we increased the temperature from 25 degrees to 85 and went back to 25. And we didn't observe any significant loss in performance of the devices. Just as a curiosity uh, or as a side note uh, to show you that this approach is not just uh, for say, perovskite solar cells, but could be tested in other solar cells as well. So I show you our, our work as, uh, with uh, researchers from KAUST, uh, where uh, SAMs were applied in organic solar cells, in particular this one. And uh, again, in this case, we also uh, observed uh, noticeable uh, increase in performance of the devices and overall efficiency of around 18.4% was achieved, which is a quite good result uh, for this type of technology. So overall, I would like to, uh, I hope I showed you that this SAM approach works quite well in uh, solar cells. Uh, and uh, till the end of last year, we held uh, two uh, record performance uh, efficiency records, uh, both in silicon perovskite and CIGS perovskite tandem devices. And these uh, materials are, have been commercialized and are available from TCI and Dynamo. And if you want to test them in, in your devices uh, with ideas that you have, so you can obtain them commercially. So just to summarize, uh, we proposed an alternative to regular hole transporting materials. Uh, these mat hole transporting materials are capable of forming self-assembly monolayers. And these SAMs have a whole list of very nice advantages, such as low material consumption. So you need really low concentrations of these molecules to uh, make these monolayers. And this is the open-free technique, which is also nice. And there is a negligible absorption, light absorption, uh, which is uh, quite logical if you think that you just have a very thin monolayer on top of your substrate. There's also a possibility of molecular design, so we can modify the molecules and uh, make them more suit better suitable for different, different technologies and different uh, approaches. Uh, these monolayers can be deposited via dipping or spin coating or spraying and uh, they are also suitable for tandems or textured or rough surfaces and uh, finally i would like to thank the people who made this research this presentation possible and also our funding and you uh, for your attention